Welcome to the first edition of Sell My Scope. It's Marty here. They call me Sell My Scope. We'll talk more about that another time. In this edition, we're going to learn about Dobson flies, Helgramites. I'm going to show you an impressionistic version. I'm going to also talk about the principles of trout fly design. The larval stage of the Dobson fly is a very important trout food throughout New Zealand and many parts of the world. In this production, we're going to explore the many aspects that make this such a fascinating insect to both the fly tire and the angler. Dobson fly larvae are widely distributed and live in rivers, streams and spring creeks with stony and rocky structure for which they are perfectly adapted for. This of course is an environment we often find ourselves in as fly fishers. These insects belong to the order Megaloptera that contains Dobson flies, alder flies and fish flies. There are over 300 known species around the world. Megaloptera are considered to be living fossils of Gondwana, with many fossils dating back to the Middle Jurassic period. Shown here is an adult Dobson fly. You can see how they get the name Lacewing. These flies often hatch at night and are clumsy flyers. Trout do feed upon them, but it's not a major food source. Like all insects, Dobson fly have an interesting life cycle, starting as eggs laid in the water and they develop into the larvae that this production focuses upon. When they are ready, they climb out of the water and go into the mud and pupate along the riverbanks and then hatch into the adult during night time. These hatches of the adult mainly happen in spring and summer, but luckily for us the larval stage lives in the river all year round and it's considered to live for one to three years in the river, so very available to trout and other predators. Should you ever see an adult, I urge you to go and have a close look at the intricate structure, a real thing of beauty. Dobson flies are called by many names, the most common being Helgramite, very popular in America. Dobson flies, perhaps the most correct name, Alder flies, fish flies, lace wings, and in Japan, hebi tombo. Hebi meaning snake, tombo meaning dragonfly.
Here in New Zealand, we reference the creepy crawly nature of this insect and call them creepers, toe biters or black creepers. The name toe biter references this insect's ability to bite with its large mandibles. I have held a deep fascination with the Dobson fly larvae for many years and as a passionate fly fisher, fly fishing guide and trout fly developer I have studied this insect in detail. I'm going to share some of the study with you here. Through this active inquiry over the years I have developed several imitations for the Dobson fly. Okay, look at that trout feeding in the background, no time to waste. Here's a quick spin through the foundation of this fly that's going to be appropriate for all the impressionistic patterns. With the latex version, we're going to start off exactly the same as we did in the procedure we've just been through with the two tungsten beads, the tail, the copper wire rib. This time I'm going to get the latex, which is a 4mm strip in this case, and I've tapered the latex off, as you can see, and I'm just tying it in at the back of the hook. And a few turns in just to secure. Now I'm going to get some grey dubbing in this case, and I'm just going to start to dub it on. There's a lot of options you can use with the dubbing, and you can choose colours to suit your preferences. I'm going to show you some of these soon. Now what I like to do is start in the middle of the abdomen and then slowly work back and then slowly forward. These insects have quite a bulky abdomen so I like it to be quite bulky back here. Now I'm going to do another set of dubbing, same colour. Winding that round nice and just going to finish off behind the tungsten beads. Now I'm going to gently pull the latex forward and tie it in tightly behind the last tungsten bead. I'm going to stretch the latex and trim it like so. And put a few more turns in to secure. Now comes the important part, with the copper wire rip we're going to slowly work our way forward to give a segmented look. It's important when you wind the copper wire to do so quite tightly. This gives a pronounced look to the segmentation as you can see here. When you're finished, put a turn around behind the last tungsten bead and trim off the excess. The next stage I'm going to get two strands of fine rubber legs and wind the cord forward to in the middle of the tungsten beads and tie a set of legs in on either side, a lot like we did on the other pattern. Now I'm going to put the legs on the other side, I'm going to tweak them so that they're parallel with each other, a few turns in, now flare them back and a few turns at the back bead, trim off the back, trim off the forward to a length that you desire 
and now we're going to whip finish the fly. Now the next stage we get a dubbing brush and on the underside we tease out all the dubbing to look a lot like the gills that are found on the Dobson fly larvae. This also gives a sense of translucence to the pattern. Here's some different dubbings that I like to use. You'll see various colours and some incorporate micro pieces of rubber which give a little bit of animation to the fly. You can blend your own or buy these many available on the market. And the all-important cement or super glue to secure that thread and to secure the legs and fly. You can see here and you can see the animation you're going to get from these rubber legs. Now the most fun part of this fly, using various felt pens, colour the latex on the top. There's lots of colour options here, you can use greys, light browns, be as creative as you want. Using many different options for colouring, dubbing and legs, be as creative as you like on this particular pattern. The rough dub version is also very effective and easy to tie. Leave off the latex and just dub an abdomen roughly and use pronounced copper wire to rib. This rough dub concept became particularly popular in New Zealand in the 70s and remains so today. The hair and copper being a very archetypal New Zealand rough dub nymph similar to this. In the water, you can see the translucence and the movement and the dubbing. Let's talk about some principles of trout fly design and use the Troutlands Creeper as an example in the hope that this will stimulate you to develop some of your own patterns or your own modifications. First of all I start studying the insect. Reading literature becomes really important, both modern and historic, particularly illustrations. In my opinion it's a good idea to test the fly in the water to see how it behaves, to see how the materials behave and also observing under natural light is very important. After all, this is where true colours are revealed. And of course the best way to test flies for their durability and their effectiveness is by getting out and fishing. The trout are the ultimate decider. The first feature you'll notice on the Dobson fly is a shiny black wing case. This is perfectly emulated with the two tungsten beads. Also you can note that in between the wing cases there's a separation of cream colour, hence why I'm using the light cream or ye light yellow tying cord. That wing case sheen and separation is clearly seen here. These tungsten beads also help to get a better sink rate on the nymph. This can be really important as many of the fish sit deep in rocky runs or deep pools and the creeper fish right to the fish's level will produce really good results. Occasionally I even use free tungsten beads to get super deep. There are however situations where you don't want this fly too heavy and here depicted in this 2002 trout fly calendar is the Troutlands Creeper with no tungsten beads. It's just got some lead wire underneath and latex on the top, latex covered black to look like the wing case at the front. So good to have some modestly weighted patterns too. Colour profile matching I always consider really important 
and you can see here the black of the tungsten beads and the grey of the aftershaft looking a lot like the natural. This insect does have a lot of variations in coloration and we'll get to that soon. You could ask the question, why are we not tying this fly elongated like the natural and with all the multiple gills running down the side of the abdomen? The answer to this is as this insect drifts in the current, it often folds into a fetal position and looks a lot like the pattern that we've been tying. Also you have to remember the theme of impressionism. The aim of this is just to have a few features that represent the insect and these patterns tend to work best. Here you can see the Dobson fly drifting in the current in fetal position, a view that the trout must often see. Thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this edition. If you did, please subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Sell my scope, over and out for now, see you next time.